Now I'm going to place the valley flashing. Uh, put it into place. And try to establish where I'm going to cut it off at the fascia. And the valley flashing needs to be overhanging the edge of the roof three quarters to one inch. I'm going to use the bird stop that fits on the edge uh, to establish that line. Notice that the bird stop has a quarter inch downturn, which is a locator lift that sets against the drip edge. This automatically positions the bird stop with a three quarter inch overhang. And I'm using my hand snips. These are the red handled snips. Uh, as you can see that the piece that I'm having my left hand is is getting really messed up. And I want to keep the valley part that I'm going to save um, undistorted. side of this I'll use the green handled snips so that it's pulling the off cut out. This valley metal because of the striations in the uh, center V is pretty hard to cut. It's just really awkward to get your snips in there. Metro requires you to use snips or shear to cut this valley metal or any of our metal as opposed to a circular saw a saw typically will generate heat and make the metal prematurely rust. As you can see I've left a little bit of this metal at the end of this center V so I can notch and tab it around and close off the hole that's going to be left at the end of the valley. I do this so visually from the ground you can't see a hole at the center of this valley and also it keeps uh, insects and wasps and stuff from going up in there. Okay now on the sides of this valley there's a point which is not needed because it's going to overhang the edge of the roof and just to look better and to keep you from poking yourself on it I'm going to eliminate it. I'm going to slide it back up into place to where it's overhanging past the drip edge about one inch. Now we're ready to fasten it. The fasteners have to be placed on the outside of this valley uh, between the outside which I'm going to refer to as the return and the first rib on the outside this is the only places that's acceptable to screw this valley. I'm using a screw with a neoprene washer some people call these grommeted screws and that washer will make a good seal on the painted metal. On the rest of the roof we're going to use the two and a half inch screws that have no washer at the top of them it's unneeded against the stone coating. These screws are spaced one foot apart on center. On the right side of the roof, the valley extends past the ridge. Now I'm going to mark the center of the ridge and add a couple of inches. I'm going to cut the excess valley off. And I'll put a relief cut on each side of it so it'll bend down easier onto the other slope. Now I'm going to use my hand benders to uh, start this bend and I'll have to complete it with my hammer to get it to bend over well. 
And this is all going to be covered up at a later time, so I'm not worried about the wrinkles in this metal. Again, I'm putting fasteners into it to hold it secure at the top. I'm going to complete the, the 1x4s um, along the ridge line and up the hip there, and it's a, a very small hip. It's not something you're typically going to find on a real house. Now on the right side of this valley, I've stopped the 1x4 at the side of the valley and extended the 2x2 two two over it, not making any more penetrations into the valley. On this left side, you can see that I'm, I'm having to place a block of 1x4 into the valley and screw it into the valley to get the right height so it'll match up with the other side. This is something that is not commonly found on a real house. 